Amen. I'm going to read two verses here tonight and share just a couple little thoughts the Lord laid upon my heart. Amen. If you're not sure exactly where that is, find Jeremiah 1, go to the next chapter. <laughs> I can't stand a smart aleck preacher, can you? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Hallelujah. Found your places, say amen. amen. Verse number 12 said, Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. Look at what he said there in those first three words in verse 13. For my people. He ain't talking about necessarily the world. God's talking about his people. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, this evening as we come to the throne of grace, Lord, we thank you for this testimony of this young man. And Lord, the great work you're doing in his life. And we just hold him up before you. And pray that God, that your spirit will just continue to just strengthen him both physically spiritually and mentally and father just do the work that you've started in his life lord and let his light shine to this lost and dying world and i pray tonight god for each one of us that's here this evening lord you know our needs our family needs issues lord that we deal with and god the cares that we may have come in the house with but lord we're asking you tonight just god to move God, Lord, to just lift the burdens of those that are burdened. And uh, God, give peace to the minds whose minds are troubled. And Father, we ask you that your spirit touch in this service. And Father, anoint this vessel tonight. Just let Mark get back out of the way and let your spirit come forth tonight. And God, Lord, we just pray, Lord, you give us ears to hear and a mind to understand and a heart to receive what you have for us tonight. And we ask it in the precious and holy and righteous name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. You may be seated. Let me get me a drink here real quick. So let me get a drink. I get a drink. Amen. I want to preach on the thought tonight, if I could, broken cisterns and fountains of living waters. Broken cisterns and fountains of living waters. The writer in the book of Psalms, chapter 63, you don't have to turn there, but in that first verse, listen to what the writer said. O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee, and my soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. The psalmist knew and was craving spiritually for the things of God. He was hungry, he was thirsty. And the soul of mankind has its thirst. You and I, we thirst after the things of God. And it reaches out unto the unseen. None of us have seen God, but yet we hunger sometimes, don't we? We should hunger for that. We hunger for food, and we see that, and we want that. But there's things uh, uh, like with God, we can't naturally look at Him like I look at you, and you look at me, and we can see. But the soul of a man, or a woman, if you will, thirst for the things of God. When God created man, the Bible says He created them in His image after His likeness and He breathed life into Him. In other words, He breathed that life into Him that He would want fellowship with the Lord. We try to feel this hunger and this thirst, if you will. We try to feel it with the all manners of other things uh, that uh, that we uh, uh, try to fill uh, fill the other things uh, uh, fill our lives with other things such as money and uh, with homes and family and some even reser uh, re revert to alcohol and to drugs and to everything else that we believe will help us to feel this desire, but the spiritual thirst is deepened by the burdens of life. Amen. Most of us know what burdens of life are, don't we? And we've, it's by its tolls and it's by battles, by the weariness of sorrows and by the disappointments that life often brings, that spiritual thirst. So there must be some way for us 
to quench this burning thirst of the soul and will search out every means possible to satisfy it. Why do you think people thirst or try you people think they drink? Amen. Y'all pray for me. My the mind is kind of messing up or something. The devil's trying to get into this. But we're believing tonight that the, that this why do people drink? I, I believe it's yeah, you can say, well, they just like to party. Yeah, but they're hungry and thirsting for something. Amen. They're thirsting for something. There's something in their life that's not being fulfilled, so they'll turn to drugs and alcohol and other means of which to be able to uh, uh, feel or at least try to feel that, uh, that, that hunger and that thirst. But look at what Solomon wrote. And we know that Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. And he gained and he built and built uh, things that was uh, impossible to, uh, uh, to put a value on it. But listen, this what this man did. Uh, this. He said, I gave my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under the sun. That he would go uh, and enjoy the pleasures of life. Listen to what he said. He made himself great works. He gathered silver and gold. And the Bible said, whatever his eyes desired, he kept not from them. But after all of the things that Solomon had done and had built and had accomplished and had gained, after all of these things, listen to what he said. This is a man, amen, that God anointed at one time to build him a house. He said, I've hated my life. And I hated all my labor which I done under the sun. Amen. I'm building a foundation, so kind of lay with me here. With me. Hang with me. He said, after all that I've seen, after all that I've done, after all that has been accomplished that I've seen done in my life and the things that I've done, he said, I even hated my life. And I've hated the labor that I've done under the sun. It didn't fulfill it, did it? Amen. But listen to what Solomon wrote at the end of this in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 he said let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man Amen. fear God and keep his commandments Amen. this is the whole duty of man what is our duty to God to fear God and to keep his commandments Amen. Amen. In verse 13 of our, of our text, uh, it said, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and have hooked them out stones, broken, or hooked them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Jeremiah, in this writing, begins to write about the unfaithfulness of Israel. In so doing, he also speaks about the loss that it entails by their unfaithfulness. Jeremiah isn't speaking about, uh, isn't just speaking about the judgment that will bring to Israel in the future, but he also writes about the great loss that is presently happening to in, in our lives today. God should be more to us than just His gifts. Amen. 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 He ought to be more to us than just His gifts. Amen. Some people come to church just to see what they can get. Well, like some people come to church, they never come to church unless they have a need. You never see them darken the door unless they have a want or a need or desire. Amen. Amen. We ought to pray for them. We ought to lift them up before God. But church, God ought to be a relationship and not somebody that we look to just to supply every need even though He does do that. Amen. I trust God for every need. But that ain't just the reason why I serve Him. I serve Him. Amen. You know why I got saved? And you've heard me, some of you heard me say this. I got saved out of fear. I was afraid I was going to die and go to hell. That will shake your world if you've never had to do that. I'm telling you, God touched my life one night and put fear in me. Literally fear. Amen. But you know why I do what I do now? You know why I fight the battles that I fight now? It's because I went from fear to love. He said he didn't put in me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Church, let me tell you tonight that God is not just a God that just blesses us whenever we need a blessing, but he blesses us all the time, but he's our God. Amen. 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 God should be more to us than just gifts. He's the main source of our soul's refreshment. Listen to what we read there in that 13th verse. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. 
He said, my people. It isn't the world. The world is filled with sinners. But my people, whom I've called, who I've blessed, who I've anointed, who I have set up, who I have put my spirit in, they have forsaken me. They have turned their back on me. Sometimes people think they know better than God what's best for their lives. It is inconceivable to think that someone would forsake a fountain of living waters and be contented with a broken cistern. Amen. But it, they are. Amen. 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 The living waters, I know people today, and you do too, I imagine many of you do, but we know people who have been in the flow of the power of the anointing of the Spirit of God, whether it's a preacher or a teacher or a Sunday school teacher or, or, or a, a, a choir director or whatever it might be. We have seen the power of God flow through their hearts and flow into their lives and move and bless them and touch them and anoint them and, and, and uh, uh, let them fall out under the power of the Holy Spirit. But then, for whatever reason, they turn their back on upon God they turn their back upon God and turn to broken sisters can I tell you something tonight brother Lynn he didn't say just sisters but he said he, they turned to broken sisters you know what a sister is what it talks about in the Bible basically it's a well amen it's a well sisters are man made Amen. I said cisterns are man-made. But the living waters of the fountain of the living waters, they're not man-made. They flow from man from the power of God. Cisterns are man-made. They have holes. They have brokenness in them. But he said they have forsaken the fountains of living water. Church, it's hard to believe that anybody would turn away from that. But the devil will conceal or will deceive us in such a manner that we will turn our back upon God. I remember when I was a wee little fella, we had a well we had to draw water from. We didn't have inside water. Unless you went outside and got it, brought it in. <laughs> then we had inside water. But they had a, we had a well. And ever so often, it wasn't an every year thing, but ever so often, every three or four years or whatever, I remember very young, my grandfather, and he would bring some people in and they would have to dig that water or dig down into that well and pump out the water that was in there because it had become stagnant because of the holes that had gone in to that well. Yes. Oh, come on, church. Help me out here now. Follow me here. Amen. But you know what? They would have to get a pump and pump that out and clean that walls and clean that well. And, and then they would begin to put plaster on it. And it would last for a while and then let it fill back up again. And that's what people's turning to. They're letting those sisters and broken sisters, they're letting their lives be filled with junk and garbage. Amen. And God said, why are they doing it? Why are they turning away from the one that has blessed them? He's not talking about the world. He said, my people. My people. Hallelujah. Sisters that are broken. Sisters that are broken. Amen. It takes a great effort and pain to dig out a sister. Well, my grandfather would do that in cleaning out our well and fixing it. It was an all-day job, and sometimes it was two or three days. Amen. But we'll go to great efforts, mankind will, and to great pains to try to make our lives complete without God. Come on. Uh -huh. Come on. Amen, church. You know, I'll tell you the truth. We'll do everything we can. Amen. To fulfill our lives with everything except God. 
We'll buy bigger houses. We'll buy newer vehicles. We'll buy our stronger drinks. We'll go deeper into the alcohol. Amen. We'll go into the internet service. And you know what I'm talking about. But we'll do whatever we got to do in order that we can fill our lives up with those things. And all the time we'll leave God out. Amen. Amen. There was to bleed during these biblical times that there was hundreds of cisterns that were around Israel. And they are dug in very hard rock. But they are dug during the winter months. At best, they are an uncertain source of supply. And the water, when collected, after a period of time when it sets in these cisterns, it begins to change color. It begins to become stagnant. It become, begins to put up a smell. Amen. Hallelujah. And the taste would be changed. And sometimes it would become full of worms. Amen. God said these people, spiritually speaking, my people, are turning from the living fountains of water and turning to these cisterns that has worms, that the taste of it isn't good. Let me tell you, I used to preach a sermon, amen, that the beauty of sin, and there is a beautiful side of sin. If it wasn't, none of us would be attracted, and none of us would be fall, I would fall in to the traps of sin. But he don't show you the alcoholic, amen. He'll show you that, that nice-looking woman or that nice-looking man on that commercial drinking beer and having a good time. But they won't show you the addictions that's going on in our world today. They won't show you of the people that's changed that their lives are being snuffed out because of drugs and alcohol. Church, what I'm telling us, you may not turn to drugs and alcohol, but I'm here to tell you, we got to be careful that we don't turn away from the fountain of living water and turn unto the broken cisterns. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Israel forsook God. He helped them and delivered them from their bondage in Egypt. He strengthened them when they were weak. They could depend on him in times of uncertainty. And they received all their supplies from him during those times when he was watching over them. Time after time, God fulfilled his promises to them and blessed them. Yet, at this particular time, they had turned their back upon God. Amen. The one that helped them. They turned their back upon God. Amen. And worshiped idols. Hallelujah. I'm going to say this tonight. Amen. For somebody that might be watching through the YouTube or whatever. Our churches today are turning to a form of worship, but there's no power. Hallelujah. They're turning to a form of worship. They're worshiping a God they don't even know. Come on, church. They're worshiping a God they don't even know. Oh, they may have heard his name, but they don't know who he is. But I'm here to tell you, who do we worship? I worship the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Hallelujah. It's sad to say that so many people today that was once in the house of God, amen, now are sitting back, amen, and have forsaken God and have walked away from the church and have walked away from God. I'm here to tell you that if there's ever a day we need a revival in our land, I'm not just talking about a series of meetings but I'm talking about where the power and the spirit of God and the anointing and the, 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 the conviction fall into the house of God is today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We talk about needing to be in church. Jackie saw something on, uh, on Facebook the other day and shared with me. I said, I got to remember that. Amen. They was talking about, you know, I don't have to go to church. Amen. You know what? Maybe not. But you know what? They also said, you don't need a, 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 a parachute to jump out of an airplane. <laughs> nice to have one, but you don't have to have it. 
You might hit flat and splat, but you know what I believe? When the children of God, amen, they get out of the church, amen, and God, the devil begins to isolate them, they're going to fall flat and smack. Amen. Do you hear me tonight? Church, it's time, amen, to get back to the drinking from the fountains of the living water. Glory. Sisters, they're man-made. He said, they have forsaken me. There was a fountain of living waters. Who have they, have they forsaken? He said, who has forsaken me? He said, my people. My people have. Jeremiah 17 and 13, listen to what he said, O Lord, of the hope of Israel, all that forsakes thee shall be ashamed, and they shall depart from me, and they that depart from me shall be written, amen, in the earth. Because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of the living waters. Catch that. He said, they have written, they'll be written in the earth. What does that mean? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All throughout scripture, it talks about forsaking. In other words, their names will quickly disappear. You write up on the earth. It'll soon disappear. Whether it's through rain or storms or whatever. And that's what he's talking about. God said, my people, when you turn your back on me and you turn to your cisterns, amen. He said, it's just like me writing my your name upon the earth. Come on, church. Hallelujah. It's just like you me writing your name upon the earth. It don't last very long. But you know what? He talks about another place that he can write our names down. And that's in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm here to tell you, loved ones can't take it out. Hallelujah. You can't take it out. But I'm glad tonight that my name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Aren't you tonight, church? Oh, let me tell you tonight. I'm telling you, when your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, God remembers it and knows that it's here. Hallelujah tonight. Church, let us not forsake the fountain of the living waters. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All throughout Scripture we read about the living God. He's alive. He's a living God. Speaks about His absolute existence and of Him being independent. Amen. Self-existent. God will, the God we serve is absolutely exempt from limitations. Psalms 42 and 2 said, my, whole, my soul thirsteth for God, the living God. Amen. Are we hungry tonight? Are we satisfying? We're letting the world satisfy our needs. Amen. Are we letting the world satisfy and fill these broken cisterns? Let me tell you, if you ain't got God, you're broken. Amen. 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 If you ain't got God, you're broken. Hallelujah. And he said, they've forsaken me. All sin is forsaking of God. Adam turned his back on God when he listened to the voice of the tempter. Can I tell you today, there's too many God's people listening to the voice. Or let me say it this way. There's too many of God's people listening to the wrong voice. Amen. 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 They're listening to the wrong voice. And I'm going to tell you, he whispers to all of us that wrong voice. Amen. He whispers to all of us that wrong voice does. But who are you going to listen to? Amen. The devil says you don't have to do this and you don't have to do that and you don't have to serve God that way. You don't have to go to church to be saved and you don't have to do this. Amen. Let me tell you what. When that devil begins to speak, you better begin to run or be willing to stand upon the word of the living God and declare the truth of what God has said. Not what man necessarily said, but what God said because the devil, amen, he ain't afraid of our singing. Come on, church. He ain't afraid of our singing. He ain't even afraid of my preaching. But I can tell you one thing that he's afraid of. Amen. And that's when the child of the living God who drinks from the living fountains of water when he begins to stand upon the word and say hallelujah Lord I'm believing you. I'm trusting in you. How did the devil, how did Jesus get the devil to run? Oh he had the power because he was the son of God but he didn't use the power but he used the power of the word of God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. I'm telling you, church, I don't want to be a broken fountain or a broken cistern. I want the living waters to flow into my life and to flow out of my life. Amen. He said, they've hooved them out stone or cisterns, broken cisterns that hold no waters. Think about this. Cisterns also are limited in how much they can hold and how much they're supplied. People usually fill, those, fill their lives with those things and those desires that they have on the inside. What is our innermost desires? Oh, boy. Y'all got quiet on that one, didn't you? Come on, brother. What's our innermost desires? Is it to serve the living waters? Or is it to fill this broken cistern with things that truly don't matter? Amen. We got desires, church. We got desires. Amen. We got desires. I said this, and Brother Larry's dad said this, says this. People do what people want to do. What they desire to do. Amen. They do what they desire to do. If they desire to be in God's house, they'd be here. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about work and or sickness or something of that nature. Folks, I got them too. In my family. They all, oh, I can't tell you how many people that have told me since we've been coming to this church, Brother Mark, we're coming. We're going to be in there. We'll be there. I tell you, they told me we'll be there Sunday. But Sunday's never come. They've never come. But you know what? I've learned one thing. This boy right here, he does what is in his heart to do. Amen. Because what's in the heart, it's going to come out. Come on, church. I better tell you, we do what we want to do. People say, I don't have time to read the Bible. Let me tell you, if you've got a desire strong enough, you'll read the Bible. Amen. Oh, I don't have time to pray. If you've got a desire to pray, you'll be in the prayer closet calling out the name of God. Amen. You say, Brother Mark, I don't know how to pray. Let me tell you, just get in there, shut the door behind you, and just... Give it to God, whatever it is. But whatever the desire is in the heart, it's going to come out. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Right. The limited people fill their lives with things and desires to have on the inside. If we desire those things of God, we'll pursue those things of God. If we want a new vehicle, it's amazing what we'll sacrifice to get it. Oh, come on now. Or a new home. Nothing wrong with those things, folks. Don't get don't get me wrong. Amen. I like to I like mine. Amen. I don't like to walk at night. You can look at me and tell that. Amen. Hallelujah. But you know what? I like riding. I like driving. Amen. But you know what? It's amazing. What we'll sacrifice in order to we get something bigger and better and more dependable. Nothing wrong with it. But what are we doing for God? Where are we leaving God? Where's God's place out there tonight? Amen. We read in a story, and I'm going to close here real quickly. We read in a story that we all know very well. I'm going to turn over to it. You're welcome to go there if you want to, but I ain't going to spend a lot of time there because I'm going to close. But in John chapter 4, it talks about the woman at the well. You remember the story, don't you, where Jesus was at the well and the woman came to the well to draw water. John chapter 4, starting in verse number 6. Amen. He said, Now Jacob's well was there, and Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey, thus sat on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Then cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away to the city to buy water, or to buy meat. Then saith a woman of Samaria to him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews had no dealing with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, 
if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith unto thee, give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him and he would have given thee, what? Living water. Living water. Oh. Woman saith unto her, sir, I know. Uh, uh, sir, thou hast nothing to draw with and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob which gave us this well and drank of it, thank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whomsoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. And whosoever shall drink of the water that I shall give in him, be, him shall never thirst, but the water shall not give in him shall be in him a well of springing, a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water, that I thirst not, neither God, and go hither to draw. And Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband. To the, and I'll stop there. There's some more, but I don't want to go any farther. Just a couple of quick thoughts. Jesus, the Bible said that he was wearied in his journey. He stopped at that well. Do you ever wonder why the, the story was that Jesus was weary? Because that shows his human side. He was the Son of God, completely God. But he became weary in the journey. I know he was going to meet that woman and so forth. But think about this. He showed his human side. In other words, what you and I face, he, he feels the pain. When we get weary in our lives, he feels that. He knows, he knows that. When we become troubled, he feels that. He knows us well enough to know what we feel. Amen. Jesus being weary in his well doing, he realized, Jesus realizes this journey can be to us wearisome. Can, can it? Yes. In verse 7, Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. Not only was Jesus tired from his journey, but it's he was thirsty as well. Jesus had taken upon himself all of human desires and cravings. But this was not the only reason that he told her to give me to drink. He told that woman to give me to drink. There's a reason why he done that. He wanted to try her. He went to where she could go to what she had and said, give it to me. What you have, give to me. This water. In other words, what he's saying, what do you have tonight? What do we have tonight as his children that we can give to him? Are we willing to give it? Are we willing to give it? He wants the heart. You've heard me say that. We get the heart. He get everything. He got the rest of it. But church, he's always wanting us to give him something. I mean, I think sometimes we come to church and we're just saying, Lord, here I am. You ought to be thankful that I just showed up today and got out of bed and got my clothes on, got me a share. Amen. And I just come to your house. We ought to be the ones. That says, God, I'm unworthy Amen. to even be in your house. Amen. John the beloved disciple, or John the disciple, or John the uh, John the Baptist. I'll get it out here in a minute. He wasn't even worthy, or at least felt like it, that he could untie Jesus' shoes. Amen. Amen. Because he recognized who he was. Folks, he's the living waters, the fountain. Amen. Jesus told that woman, give me to drink. He didn't take it from her. He said, you give it to me. When he did, he said, I'm giving you the power. Now, what are you going to do with it? He may be telling some of us here tonight that he wants us to do something or he's wanting to, for us to give him something. The 
Lord spoke to me and Jackie here about three, four weeks or whatever, right before I got this arm bust. It's been a couple of months now. I'm going to tell you what it was because I ain't going to let the devil rob me. Nobody knows what it is but me and Jackie. But God told me, he said, I want you to, I told Jackie, and we prayed about it, and I felt the, the leading myself. I said, let's do it. I said, I want you to do this. He told us what it was. And we began to do it. Then I fell, broke his arm. And I thought, Lord, how am I going to do what you told me to do with one arm? And I'm going to tell you what it is. It's nobody's business, not just me and Jackie. But what I'm saying is, when God tells us to do something, he's given us the power. Okay, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Am I making sense to you? Yeah. Amen. I hope I ain't trying to sound too confusing, but church, we, there's things we need to give to God. There's things we need to give to him. Amen. You may be having children, you may be having children that's man just messed up out of this world, or grandchildren or something. Give them to God. Amen. You have the power. Did he not say, cast your cares upon me? Amen. But we sometimes want to be the want to be the martyr and just people to feel sorry for us. Amen. But you know what? We need to give it to God. God gives us the power to give it to him. Amen. Listen to what he said in verse 10. If you knew the gift of God, who it was said unto thee, give me to drink, we would have asked him that he would have given thee the living waters. And day after day, this woman kept coming back to that well. Day after day, kept coming back to that well. Jacob's well. My goodness, it's Jacob's well. Well, hallelujah. Amen. Jacob was a great patriarch, great man, but he was a man. But she was talking to the man. Yeah, right. Amen. Yeah. She was talking to the man. The one of living waters. He said, if you'd have knew who I was, you'd have asked me. Amen. You'd have asked me for this living water. Jesus told her, said, if you drink of this water, whosoever drinketh this water will thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the well of water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into life. Amen. And she said, sir, give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Let me have it. I remember very well the night that I asked for that living water to come into my life. I remember it well. I know, you know you do too. What a difference, what a change he can make. Amen. Amen. Would you stand as they come to the music? Amen.